Well, I can hear some people asking, why are you worried about such a small amount of movement on the y-axis? Well, the fact that that dot is moving up and down, I will just move that mirror mount a small amount. And you can see, I'm easily I'm changing the position of the focus point by at least a millimetre. So that's why I'm worried about it, because if I was actually cutting a straight line along that axis, it would go out in the middle by a millimetre, and it wouldn't be a straight line. Let's try that one more time. We see how it changes as we move backwards and forwards across the machine under power. So you can see it sitting comfortably on top of the line there. It's now going through the line, below the line. And now back up to the top of the line again. So it's moving down a mill, mill and a half in the middle of the traverse somewhere because of distortion of that mirror. <clears throat> well, on my quest for the answer, I've decided to be a bit brutal. Uh, first of all, I've put another screw just under here to tie this bracket into this very stiff section just here because it was all mounted, just a little two screws along the back there on the, on the flimsy end of that bracket. Now that bracket is a lot, lot stiffer now. Um, but the other thing is I found that I couldn't really adjust this head up much and I'd run out of adjustment on my block and I thought well I'll just take the head off and have a look see what's underneath here because I'm just that sort of guy I'm a bit curious and we find that we've got actually a lot of adjustment here if I wanted to move the dot across onto the center line of the head I can do it just here Look, I've got a huge amount of adjustment. The only problem is the screws that fit in there, they do just about slide along, but because of the way in which this has been punched with a CNC punch, it's all notchy. And the screw actually won't adjust very easily. It'll only just click along there. And it certainly, there's no movement in that slot to allow me any sort of twist. So I'm going to be a little bit more brutal now and I'm going to take some material off the inside of that slot and the material off the inside of that slot so that the two slots effectively allow me to twist the screws round one way or the other. Just using one of my trusty engineering tools to fix this problem. Because the great advantage of having my red dot here is that I can pop this back on and I can immediately find an ideal place to mount the head. We've now got enough rotation here to get the beam either side of the head, whereas previously I couldn't. And I shall lock the head up there and then see if we can adjust with the springs, with the adjustment that we're given. But with no adjustment on it at all, I know that it's more or less in the right place, which is good news. Well, the important thing is to go around the back of the machine and make sure we take the pointer out before we switch the laser on, which I can now do. Just set that about a millimetre lower than proper focus. So we set the focus about a millimetre down into the material and we'll turn some air on and also put some lights on. Well, I think it's burning through okay because the smoke's coming out underneath, it's not coming out on top. You'll notice how clean the top surface is because there's no smoke coming out the top. 
little bit more charred than it normally is. Probably could go a little bit faster. It's two millimetres a second. Maybe I've got more power there now. I don't know. Let's just have another trial, shall we? Let's run that at four instead of two. I'm running at 20 milliamps. I'm running at full power. That's better. It's not as charred. There's virtually no charring on there at all. So why don't I try something silly like six? Well, I have to say that's amazing because I've never done that before. I've never run 10 millimeter ply at six, mil six millimeters a second. And that's come out very nicely. I think eight will probably be pushing the boundaries, but let's give it a try. Uh, yeah, I think we're puffing a little bit of smoke out the top now, which gives me the impression that we're not cutting through. We've got some coming out underneath, and I think this will be an intermittent cut, and you can see that we've got some smoke, so smoke on the surface. Well, it has actually cut through, and I will be able to push that out, I dare say. That's right on its limit. That's not a bad cut, that's hardly charred at all, you know. It's quite amazing. Okay, well I think that's enough playing around for today. Um, I think we've demonstrated that you can uh, you can use your red dot pointer for more than just setting up your mirrors. You can set it up and then you can play with your machine and it makes resetting the machine so much easier. And just for the record, so that we know exactly what's been going on today, we'll do a quick power check. And I shall just check the current. Sitting there at 20. Point, it's about 21 milliamps. Looks as though we might just about have 27. 27 watts at the head. And that's what we were using to cut that plywood with. I never cease to be amazed by this machine. It's a rubbish machine that seems to perform miracles. Right, just before we walk away from the machine, even though I've turned the power off, you notice that there's some lights on in the machine. That's 100 watts of heating energy which I leave in the machine. And when the temperature gets below about 12, um, let's just check. I think it's 10 degrees C actually. So the water temperature in the <coughs> the water temperature in the tank water tank down there at the moment is 12.9. The tank will start heating up when it gets below 12. And let's just check what the other one is. B1, B2, 9.7. So temperature B2, which is the temperature that's monitoring the air around the tube. Is below 10 degrees C so it's turned the um, heating on underneath that tube to try and keep it warm and when the water tank gets down below 10 degrees C as well it will turn 100 watts of heat under the tank on and also circulate water around the tube so that there's basically 400 watts sorry so there's basically 200 watts of heat energy that's available to keep this machine warm during the winter months well, during this session, uh, you've seen me rip my machine to pieces, as I often do. Um, I have to say that with the aid of this little tool, uh, I don't have any fear anymore about ripping mirrors and heads off. They, it's just such an easy task to put them back together and get them lined up. Um, I would not be without this now, and this third iteration, which I designed for the benefit of others as much as myself, um, so that others could make it quickly and cheaply um, has turned out to be very successful. I'm very happy to make the drawings available to anybody that wants to try and make one for themselves. Um, all you've got to do is just uh, message me and let me have your email address and I will send you a DXF file which contain the drawings and all the specifications for the bits and pieces that you'll need. 
So good luck too if you want to go and try and make one.